As the artificial intelligence phenomenon rolls on, the question emerges, what are the cybersecurity attack implications of AI? Now Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute has formed a team called the Artificial Intelligence Security Incident Response Team. It's working with sponsors in the Defense and Homeland Security departments. We get more now from the director of the CERT division of the Software Engineering Institute, Greg Tuhill. Greg, good to have you back. Thanks, Tom. What's going on here? Are you talking about AI in the service of cyber protection or how people might use AI to enhance the ability to attack or both? All of the above, Tom. As we have uh, been uh, running the CERT now for 35 years, we've kind of developed the cyber incident response discipline. And uh, arguably, Carnegie Mellon and the Software Engineering Institute are the birthplace of cybersecurity as uh, we formed the original CERT, which I have the honor of leading right now. And we've evolved from just a, a computer emergency response team to a cybersecurity engineering and resilience team. And uh, we've been receiving through our CERT coordination center uh, responsibilities, numerous reports of incidents that involve supply chain, uh, data attacks, algorithmic uh, attacks, hard and hardware and software attacks and defects. And we're seeing also cyber reconnaissance where folks are doing specific scans, looking at uh, AI systems and trying to derive information about the, the models, the architectures, the frameworks, and such. Based on the, the vulnerabilities that are being reported to us, and at this point, all of them are embargoed, where folks are sharing with us and saying, hey, we want you to help us protect the, our, our company and our you know the victims. But we're working with them uh, through our responsible disclosure program to identify means of understanding what's happening as well as working with those uh, organizations on what they should do about it. I think it's really important for our audience to remember that a lot of these things that we're seeing being reported to us at the CERT are, are mirroring everything that we've seen evolve over the last 30 plus years in the cyber realm. And uh, as we take a look at AI, AI is still doing things with software. The The models are software driven. Sure. The frameworks are the same types of uh, techniques that we're using, but at much grander scales in other places. It leads us to believe that AI vulnerabilities are cyber vulnerabilities. And the things that we are doing in the CERT coordination lends us to believe that we need to rethink how we do incident response when it's applied to a artificial intelligence or machine learning system. Right. I and guess my question is, what are the unique software or protection challenges of AI-powered systems versus regular old software applications, which are vulnerable enough as they are? The commonality is much greater than the differences. But the differences uh, is usually scale, where you will have uh, AI systems that are uh, taking advantage of distributed processing, often in multiple cloud environments, and frequently in cloud environments that are operated by multiple vendors. The scale of the data that is ingested and the computing power is generally at uh, magnitudes of complexity that uh, dwarf normal IT and co commercial uh, type of systems. And, and then three, is as we take a look at the different types of models, and there's many different flavors of AI, there's going to be multiple languages often involved in the system itself, making it extremely difficult to tell the difference between an attack and a defect. Further, and this is the last one, is when you have something like generative AI, where the model is learning, and as the data is changing, you can never get back to that one second, you know, instance where you had a problem. You can never really quite replicate it, which adds to the degree of difficulty. So that's why we formed this team is, is to take advantage of our experience, but also to grow the community in how to do incident response in an artificial intelligence environment. We're speaking with Greg Tuhill, director of the CERT division of the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. Basically what you've said then to maybe summarize it, and you can tell me if this is a fair summary, 
AI vastly balloons your attack surface, in effect. Absolutely. You know, as you take a look at the, the models, the frameworks, the connectivity, the computing, the amount of data, and the amount of programming languages that are generally put to play in building out an AI in, and or machine learning system, the scope and scale is such that determining whether or not you're being attacked or you have a defect becomes the acme of skill and something that we are treating this as part of our applied research activities. And we're looking to uh, take advantage of the 35 years of CERT experience to bring the community, uh, both the constituency as well as the technical communities together to make AI as good as AI can be, safe, assured, and trustworthy. And now you have the Artificial Intelligence Security Incident Response Team. What are the initial challenges? Are there specific projects it's going to work on? And will you bring in Homeland Security and the Defense Department to collaborate on those particular challenges? We've already been working with DHS and with um, the Defense Department through our sponsors and the, the research and engineering team, but also we've briefed uh, folks, uh, you know, such as uh, General Skinner and the DISA folks uh, who run the DODEN, the Department of Defense Information Networks. And, you know, for the audience, if you have a vulnerability or you have a concern over an AI system and such, we've already set up at our website at kb.cert.org as part of the normal vulnerability uh, management process. Contact us at the CERT and uh, report what you're seeing. And uh, what we do is, is we bring together the experts, not only from here at Carnegie Mellon, but throughout our vast network of friends in academia, in the research community, and in industry. We've got uh, over 3,900 different companies that we do information sharing with. As we take a look at this approach, think of it as the AI cyber watch, you know, where we are trying to identify issues and solve them before they become problems. So the reported under the, you know, safe disclosure incidents that you have collected are some of those from federal situations and do the collected reports of AI related incidents from industry and government, do those form the basis of, of the particular problems the team will work on? Well, you know, as we take a look at the uh, impact that AI is having on not only national security, but on national prosperity. It's increasingly becoming difficult to seg segregate between the two. Uh, so uh, as we take a look at AI and the application of this technology, we're taking vulnerability reports from government, from industry, and from consumers as well. And we have that network in place to coordinate uh, across all of the national security as well as the national uh, economy systems. Sounds like you really got to operate fast here because the instances and the use cases of AI seem to roll out almost by the minute. And I would think that especially in the federal organizations or large financial institutions and places like that, they would really want to get around the cyber issue before they deploy all of this AI or will, you know, could have a disastrous catch-up situation down the line. You kind of highlighted one of the issues that's uh, something that the marketplace is confronting right now. As you take a look at the building of a lot of these AI models, we are seeing some evidence as part of our research that uh, some folks, as they're building out some of these models and frameworks, aren't necessarily taking advantage of the lessons learned from DevSecOps and some of the best practices in software engineering that have been pioneered here. And as we take a look at a lot of the reports that are coming in, uh, we're finding that some of them are self-inflicted wounds because of not necessarily applying some of those software engineering principles in a, uh, a race to get to market. As we take a look at, is this as an attack? Is it a defect? All of those things come to play as we do the forensics and the engineering work to try to find the root of problems, but also a path for a solution. And just a final sort of double question, what will be the output work product of this team Will it be publicly available? And are you also working with NIST, which is always updating its guidelines, and they have a special AI series of publications, you know, that they've been working on also? We always work with NIST. My teammates here across the SEI, 
regardless of our technical divisions, remain engaged with the standards bodies, not only here nationally, but our contributors in international fora. 